Hello and welcome to Good Deeds, the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. I'm Mark Crosby. Thank you for joining us for this program. Joining me today, as in programs past, is the Register of Deeds for the County of Norfolk, and that would be Bill O'Donnell. Bill, welcome back. Mark, thanks very much, and uh, it's always great updating uh, what we, we do with the Registry of Deeds and uh, today's topic being, uh, you know, historical and genealogical research, things that are available at the Registry. Uh, it's really a privilege to be here and, and speak about it. Absolutely, and I should mention that this program does play throughout uh, Norfolk County and even beyond. I had mentioned, uh, as you had uh, come into the studio and we're preparing uh, for this particular program that the town of Shirley is also running this well, that's, series. That's great and um, again uh, the biggest asset most of us have are our homes and the Registry of Deeds is an arm of government that deals with the homes you know and, and there's so many issues that affect our homes from foreclosure assistance to scams. Um, I mean, today is a little bit about history and everyone likes history and uh, um, in Norfolk County um, Registry of Deeds dates back to 1793. In fact, the first governor of Massachusetts, and uh, he was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, John Hancock, signed the legislation establishing Norfolk County um, and the Norfolk Registry of Deeds back in 1793. And I always say the mission uh, of the Register of Deeds back in 1793 was probably the same, to uh, maintain the land records that get recorded at the registry, to do it efficiently, to do it accurately, to do it securely, and to make sure that these community land records, and that's what they are, they belong to the communities and to the people in those communities, that they have access uh, to those records. So um, we're very excited to talk about the history. Uh, maybe uh, back in 1793 when, when our, our government was being formed, um, that was history, you know, and, and uh, maybe the focus back then was not to look at the documents from a historical uh, perspective, but certainly things have changed. We've seen at the registry a real interest in genealogical research and historical research. And um, again, I, I recognize that the principal um, role of the registry is, is to play a key role in the real, re real estate sector. The things that we've done to modernize the registry, it's really to to help the uh, consumers, to help the attorneys, to help the real estate brokers, to help the engineers, and, 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 and to make sure the documents get recorded. And that's a big part of our economy uh, nationwide and certainly regionally is the real estate economy. But um, we're going to talk about history and Norfolk County, I, I always say it ma makes me good at trivia uh, uh, cocktail parties. <laughs> there were four presidents born in Norfolk County and uh, we have two of them here. Uh, John uh, Kennedy uh, in Brookline, and uh, George Bush uh, Sr. was born in Milton, and of course, uh, John Adams and John Quincy Adams. And it's kind of interesting to mention Brookline because as we look at some of the documents, uh, people say, well, wait, what, what Brookline is by itself. Well, actually, uh, back in 1793, uh, Brookline was attached to Norfolk County because uh, Reedville, Hyde Park, West Roxbury, Dorchester, South Boston, Roxbury were all part of Norfolk County. So when you look at the records in Norfolk County, you can actually see documents about South Do Boston and Dorchester. And the reason why Brookline is separate, land, some of these communities started getting annexed into the city of Boston, whereas Brookline uh, voted to stay. Uh, in the city of Boston, uh, to, to not go with the city right. of Boston and stay in Norfolk County. And similarly, people look at Cohasset on the other end and say, why is Cohasset se separate? Well, when the, when the law was signed in 1793, Hingham and Hull were part of Norfolk County. But between the passage of that legislation and the final enact, enactment, they petitioned the uh, general court to get out of Norfolk County because they viewed themselves as a seafaring community and they were a little tr troubled that Norfolk County was going to be agrarian in nature and what bothered them was driving to the Shire Town, or the capital of the county is the Shire Town in Dedham, where the Registry of Deeds is currently located. It's been located since 1793. So the folks from Hingham and Hull didn't want to, um, you know, join in, in the travels. Uh, they thought it would be arduous. So, um, but Cohasset stayed. 
And uh, some people speculate that Cohasset stayed because a lot of the Brookline residents had summer homes in Cohasset, and Brookline was part of Norfolk County. It's hard to kind of uh, ascertain why um, Cohasset stayed uh, historically, but they did. Uh, anyway, what's out there for people? Uh, some of the modernization initiatives I'm talking about really help the operations of the registry, but they also help people do historical and um, genealogical research. First of all, go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, and we have a services banner, and if you click services, there's a gene genealogy section. And we have links and information, because uh, clearly, um, genealogy, I, I, I've done some research, and it, it, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, you know, I, my grandparents are from Ireland, but you know, on other parts of the family, it, 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 they were from New York up to you know Canada it, it, it's really uh, fascinating and there's you know great shows around like finding your roots uh, so uh, there's more and more people interested in history and genealogical research so we do have some links at www.norfolkdeeds.org but what have we done to make it easy for you you can go to our website our index is back to 1793 are integrated. So if you want to run a name, and, and sometimes you can run the names of one of the presidents, John Adams, and some of the documents that came, uh, come up. Um, Norfolk County has great history. Uh, there's a, a deed from John Adams, the second president of the United States, to John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States. So you can run the indexes. But we also uh, made uh, copies, and they're out uh, on the internet, of the old scanned indexes, the, the old written indexes that were written in that you can look up, because some people just like to, to look at the old writings, and, and we'll get into that a little later. Um, how many images? Well, all the images that are uh, available at Norfolk County by you coming to the registry at 649 High Street, and we'd love to have you. There's books. Uh, all, all our documents, I still do it. I might have modernized the registry with the focus on the internet and uh, having people being able to, to look at these records from, the, from their homes or business. We've, we tried to bring uh, the registry records into people's homes and businesses. But you can come to the registry and do it the old-fashioned way. We still print the books. We still print the indexes. And we, I, I was doing some checking before I came here. Over 13 million uh, documents. Um, are available on the internet library at www.norfolkdeeds.org. And that's over 40 million pages of documents. So wow. tremendous amount of information. And um, why do I mention that? Because all that information is, is, is available um, for you to look up. We have people that want to look at, hey, who lived in my home? Absolutely. And, um, and, and some people, uh, I, I, I've brought some, some, some uh, documents and things like that. Here, here's an old uh, deed, um, and you could see the handwriting. Uh, the register, right now we do everything is typed and, 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 and driven by the computer. But the register, uh, and it was Captain Elephant Pond. He was the first register. There's been 11 registers, another uh, sense of history. Um, he always picked somebody probably who had good penmanship because they had to handwrite a lot of what they would do is take this original document and then handwrite it into the book. So, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 there was no copy machines. So, right, of course. Uh, they would do that. So this, this document uh, is uh, land that's partly in Quincy, partly in Milton, 1806. Um, and it's just, it's just kind of interesting. So you can see these are handwritten. The, this other handwritten document, uh, you could have bought, uh, you could bought some land. Uh, it was in Milton for thirty-nine dollars and sixty cents. This document, and again, a lot of the penmanship. Um, you know, uh, it's all handwritten out. And uh, if that were the case now, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd own a piece of land. You I have me, about thirty-six dollars in my you wallet. You and me both. <laughs> Another document, again, an original. Um, this is an original deed from Medway. So we we have deeds from from all around the county. Uh, but what makes this? Uh, you could see penmanship. Uh, one of the projects we were especially uh, proud of. We had a, a, a project. History comes alive. And if you go on our website. 
website, we have two volumes. One was done for the 225th anniversary of Norfolk County, and another was done because we're in uh, what is uh, the fourth building. Actually, the first building, um, the Captain Elephant Pond, imagine that. He was a Revolutionary War, uh, you know, he fought in the Revolutionary War. Uh, he's the first elected register of deeds, and he has to keep the, his books for three years at his dad's house in Dedham because they were building the courthouse. Um, so uh, we dedicated the current registry, we, we renovated it, and in, in 2019 we uh, had a ceremony and we did books and we have notable land records, for instance, I just opened up, that's Alley Raisman, people that lived here in Norfolk County. We have modern people, historical people. So there's so much great history um, to do it. And this book came out of a project, I called it the History Comes Alive Project, because these documents from 1793 to 1900, as you can see, uh, I, I mentioned when this came to the registry, this is an original deed, the Scrivener wrote out this whole document and put it in the book. Well, sometimes it's hard to read those documents. Um, and what we did is we started a transcription project where from 1793 to 1900, all those documents were handwritten. And in 1900, Register Burdekin probably went around the county talking about his modernization initiatives, the typewriter, and they were typing things out. But all the documents were handwritten. So what we did was transcribe them all. And again, it was really done uh, to assist what we're supposed to be about, which is the real estate economy. And the lawyers like it because the original document is the original document. It's the legal document. But it assisted them in having a typed version that they could kind of you know, review. But now for historical and genealogical research, People are like, whoa, I can read these documents. And that's why I wanted the history to come alive. There's so much history in Norfolk County. Um, but it, if it's hard to read the document, it, it, it really can't come alive. And you were commended for your work, correct? Uh, yes. Well, it, 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 first of all, it just regular people are like, wow, I, I can learn so much by looking at these documents. For instance, uh, sometimes in the, and I love the descriptions, you're a yeoman, you're a farmer, you're a fur, fur trader. They would actually put, you know, now when we buy a house, it's just your name, but, you know, they would put your name and occupation. So that's kind of interesting. But I also found it interesting, in some deeds, they would list everything that was included in the sale which was in that home. And you got a sense of, you know, history, what was in the homes and, and you, know, it, you know, there was no, you know, electricity <laughs> and things like that. And um, so some people find it fascinating. I love history uh, and you see it more and more. Um, and, and you know, we did get commended just from uh, a lot of the historical commissions and historical societies. People have come in and commented about it. But uh, I'm also proud of uh, David McCulloch, who was a um, noted author, and he, he wrote about John Adams and John Quincy Adams. Um, he mentioned how uh, having a, tr a transcribed document, you know, for, for someone for years, he had to pour through handwritten documents that, that it, 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 it assisted research and um, it certainly assisted the information that's out there that you could actually look at a, a transcribed document and, and, and kind of come up, you know, with what's, what, what, what's in there. So I, I suppose, I mean, land records are useful to establish the whereabouts of a particular person at a particular time and place. Yes, and, and again, uh, we see a lot of people, they just want to know who lived in their home. We see that more and more. Um, when we go out and we, do, we, we bring our computers out to the communities and people come up, oh, I'd like to kind of trace my house back and see who was there. And they get the names and then they can start doing research at maybe the town hall, look up a death certificate, what the occupations were. Uh, other people are, are interested because they're doing genealogical research on who their ancestors, ancestors were. I also find it fascinating too that there's some philosophy. I, 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 I mean, we're, we're so lucky in Norfolk County to have four presidents born here. I don't think too many counties can, in, in America can claim that. But, uh, you know, John Adams, 
he had a uh, he, he deeded some property to Quincy, but he deeded it uh, in special recognition of John Hancock, who we mentioned. And he writes about what a patriot and how much uh, John Hancock contributed not just to Massachusetts, but to, to the whole revolution and to the whole formation of the government we know today. Um, so there's philosophies. Uh, and uh, John Adams, again, uh, in another deed, um, he starts, he thinks everyone should take Greek and Latin, and, and there's some philosophies about scholarship and, and, and education. So within these documents, it's not just names, uh, but there's also, um, Kind of philosophies, uh, a, a little, a little glimpses of history uh, when you when you look through uh, the documents. Let's talk about uh, just some of the documents that would be available to research: deeds, mortgages, uh, death certificates. Sure, as as I said, you know, uh, for the most part, w there's a practical side to what we do that people uh, they want to make sure when they buy a house that the deed gets recorded that it, they own it legally. Um, the bank wants to make sure if they're lending me money, which we all need to borrow money to buy property, uh, unless we're you know, very uh, affluent, uh, the bank wants to make sure that mortgage gets recorded. I, as a consumer, want to make sure my discharge gets recorded, that if I'm lucky enough to pay my mortgage off or I refinance and get a lower rate or knock some years off, I want those old mortgages um, to show that they've been paid off, so mortgage discharges. A lot of communities, um, you know, they, they, they might be a Board of Appeal decision. Well, the Board of Appeal uh, wants to make sure that document gets recorded, as does the consumer that might have got a variance to put a porch on or addition to their house. The Conservation Commission records orders or conditions uh, about land uh, that's near uh, uh, protected conservation areas. So there are all kinds of documents uh, that get recorded, and, and that's the practical side of the registry. It deals with the real estate economy. but. Again, uh, there's a lot of history, and, and that's where, you know, you know, today we're talking about history because it may be of interest. I know it's of interest because I see it every day um, where people um, are, are, are just interested in what's available at the registry. And again, uh, these documents are available through the Internet. You don't have to come to the registry. You can just go online and start doing some research. Plans of land and old atlases. Yes, um, the, the plans of land, um, some of them are interleafed in the old books, and then uh, some registers said, no, we're going to put all the plans uh, together. Um, but they're all around. Um, you know, the, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a plan of land of, of where the registry sits. You know, the, the county bought the land uh, back in, in the late 1800s, and it took them a while, but eventually they got legislation and some uh, uh, monies together to build uh, the, the registry, and it, it started in 1903 and was completed in 1905, and there's a plan of land there, and there's, uh, you know, plans of land uh, all around the county um, showing uh, the land uh, as was recorded, you know, back in the 1800s. Or, as we say, the first document uh, back in 1793 is viewable. It was a deed. It was a deed in Foxborough, Massachusetts, and you can look up that deed, and uh, you can see the handwriting and, and try to decipher the handwriting and the old English and the, how the Fs looked. And, uh, or you can hit the transcribe button. It's that easy to see the, the typed version of what you're looking at. We do have some photos from your website. That would be uh, NorfolkDeeds.org. And uh, let's go through a few of those. Sure. I think it talks, it speaks about the process in some of these as well. But uh, we're starting with here a letter from Adams to Quincy. Well, um, and actually, that's a deed. That's how we do it. That's a deed from John Adams, the first president of the United States, to, to the town of Quincy. He, he you, know, um, you know, actually, uh, again, Quincy is lucky. Two presidents and their two spouses. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, their spouses uh, were uh, historical figures, uh, Abigail Adams, in, in, in their own right. Well, this was a deed. He deeded the, the, the land because uh, he wanted a school built. But this was the deed I mentioned that had some information he talks about 
John Hancock um, because uh, this land uh, was uh, near where John Hancock uh, was born. So he had some uh, and lived. So he had some uh, good words to say about, as I said earlier, about John Hancock's role in the founding of this country and, and how, how his services, uh, and people forget, he, he was the uh, president of the first you know, Continental Congress, you know, so they, they technically would call him president, you know, but until um, George Washington, you know, was elected. There was a transition period uh, before, you know, uh, we got to the type of government we have now. Right. And uh, so, yes, that's indeed uh, from, uh, again, from John uh, Adams to John, uh, to, to, to the town of Quincy. I think the next photograph is of you. Oh, yeah. Well, again, uh, we did bring some of the old documents here, and uh, yes, uh, when they wrote about the, uh, you know, there was some uh, stories about the uh, History Comes Alive project, which, again, was a, a monumental task because from 1793 to 1900, there were over 450,000 documents that were uh, written out. And we started with the deeds, and then I said, well, you know, as, as you learn from your parents, if you're going to do something, do it right. I said, well, we're doing deeds. Let's do all the documents. Documents. So we ended up transcribing over 450,000 documents. But we started with the deeds because that's where the interest was. People were interested in deeds. And the next uh, photo, I believe, and possibly the photo after that um, are more handwritten documents. Yeah, yeah they were just in, in sort of what we kind of demonstrated uh, here, that the, you know some of these old uh, documents and what they look like and the, the penmanship. Uh, and and uh, again, uh, the the process was the old deeds would get the deeds would get brought to the, you know, by horseback or, or, or horse and buggy or walking, and they would get uh, delivered to the to the regi the registry, and the and the registry would handwrite it and then give these documents back. But some of these documents uh, we do do retain, and uh, and and it, it's it, it, it's interesting. Um, we do I do have uh, when the time's appropriate some some interesting interesting uh, topics about um, the old history. Um, my predecessor was uh, Barry Hannon, and Barry, um, he did a deed, deed, it was a deed from uh, 1835. Uh, yeah, we can probably come back into the studio from these Oh yeah, we can take a look, yeah, we can uh, show, show, show the, um, show this. Uh, we, we have this, there were actually two deeds, and Barry Hannon uh, did a great job as register. He was the ninth register. I'm the 11th register. But imagine that. In 1995, he was the register, and someone shows up with two deeds from the town of Cohasset um, from 1835. These deeds were found in a desk in, in, a, in a house and were needed to, to kind of show the you know, yeah, there were title issues, you right. know, and, okay. and uh, the title issues got solved. So I always thought it was neat that Barry Hannon, and uh, here's his signature, the register in 1995, was recording a deed from, from uh, 1835. And wouldn't you know, in 2016, I had a very similar experience. The town of Foxborough was doing research. I think they were trying to fix up some of the schools. And they found a deed. And this deed was from 1850, October of 1850. And very similar to what you see here, it's an old deed, and you know deeds even they're old can still be recorded, and it's the modern book and page with with my signature on it as register, which is on every document. But to see a to have a document um, uh, from the the town of Foxborough, uh, because the the the, the um, couple uh, there was a, a couple that donated the land to the town of Foxville for school purposes, and now all of a sudden, when they're doing research, fixing up the school, there's a title issue. Is the deed. They found the deed somewhere in Foxborough and uh, recorded it in 2016. So I always thought, uh, again, kind of neat that some old deed from the 1800s is getting recorded under the modernization process, under the whole computerization where the document gets scanned and, and um, you know, the, the time stamps are on it. And uh, Whereas uh, the time stamps uh, you know, on some of these uh, are handwritten, you know, back in the day, you know, and you can see this is, uh, there's a signature on this document again, Captain Elephant Pond, I love the name, uh, first register, and he signs every one of them, as do um, Barry Hannon has his signature affixed. So we have followed the processes from 1793. The register would affix his signature on, on the documents, as does all my predecessors. Barry Hannon was the um, Ninth register, Paul Harrell before me was the 10th, I'm the 11th register, and we affix you know, our signatures to these documents. 
Going back to the photographs once again, this is more in the uh, way of handwritten documents. Right. I think we try to show you know uh, the handwritten, and, and it's tough to read. Uh, and again. The practical side is the, the, the professionals that, that use the registry to conduct real estate business love the fact that we transcribe the documents, but then people from history, like an like a, a, a author like David McCulloch, or people who are on the historical commissions or hist historical societies, or just regular people, love the fact that they can also try to read the documents. But history can only come alive if you read it, uh, and you can. Uh, sometimes you can't, and that's where the typed versions, the transcribed versions, have really uh, been helpful. We do have a uh, another photograph of you, surrounded by many books and uh, still holding these pages. And what we've done is we've uh, named uh, the, the registry building, beautiful building. It's been renovated. We named uh, this is in the uh, again Captain Elephant Pond seems to be the this is in the pond room. We named after all the registers uh, before me uh, sections, uh, rooms at the registry and sections. And this is the pond room. And you can see we have books all over. And book one, page one is is in this in, in the uh, left hand corner of this picture. So if you want to look at uh, all the information up at the computer, it's great. But um, we also have all the books. And when I say all the information is on the computer, it's not just the documents that are in these books. Our indexes are on the computer. And remember, uh, in Massachusetts, there are two types of land. The recorded land side, which in Norfolk County dates back to 1793, and that's where you see all these books. Uh, and there's the land court side, or register land. Um, authorization came in the late 1800s. Norfolk County's land court started in 1900. So all those documents are available. And a lot of that information is in books. They're called certificates of title. So you can come by the registry at 649 uh, High Street and look through all these books. And you know, some people like to look through the books. But maybe you, you could do the work at home and, and, and see what you can find out and then come into the registry and look, look at it through the books. We do have a registry employee at the computer. I suppose maybe she is transcribing or possibly researching. Yes, uh, doing some research. Uh, and again, all these documents were transcribed. Uh, and again, uh, you know, um, a lot of times there are title issues which go back where people have to look at the old documents. Um, but I really think as we move forward, um, the, the use of these old documents is going to be for more and more like uh, historical and genealogical research, just getting a sense of, of history. Uh, and, and it gives you a sense uh, when you see, de you know, you, you realize what an agrarian community, uh, you may not think that looking at our communities now, they're, they're right. cities, you know, uh, in Norfolk County. But, um, you know, the, the, the use of uh, descriptions like farmers and, and yeomen, and, and even the descriptions, they would say, hey, it's a farm in, in Milton or Quincy. Well, right. Not too many farms in Milton and Quincy right now. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, 1796, a land purchase. That also is one of the photos that uh, we have with us today. Yes, you, you, as you can see on the top of that uh, document is a signature, uh, Elephant Pond. He was the register. He signed uh, April 28th, and you can see 1796. And it was interesting, that, that's when Captain Pond got to move his books out of, out of his, uh, well... His home? <laughs> his home from seven, yeah, it's, uh, um, uh, you know, actually, it, it was only three years. Seventeen. It was 1793. Uh, he, he was uh, there till yeah, 1796, and then the first um, courthouse was built. And no, uh, donated a bell was Paul Revere, in the first courthouse, which is now at the Denham Historical Society. In fact, it recently went on a tour of the country. Right. Um, uh, it was in the first courthouse, and when uh, they moved it to the second courthouse, which is the Superior Court now, the registry was over there um, from like 1827 to 1903 when it finally moved to its current location. So a lot of great history, even amongst the buildings and where um, the records have been kept. Absolutely. Well, this was a fascinating show, uh, just uh, for history buffs, uh, certainly, and uh, for folks in general. I, I, as I'm getting older, I'm appreciating history a lot more.
I, I think um, his, I, I enjoy history, but uh, maybe it's because I'm becoming history. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we all are, unfortunately. <laughs> That's what my kids say. Uh, but you know what? Uh, history is good because it teaches us a lot too. So it, it, we learn from history, we learn from our mistakes, and, uh, and and we learn from our successes. So probably learn more from the mistakes, but um, I think we learn a lot from history. Well, I want to thank you for doing this program. Certainly a great series here at Quincy yeah. Access Television. And again, uh, thank you for, uh, and we thank the Access Centers throughout the county and beyond for running this program as well. Yes, I echo that. Thanks to Quincy Access. Thank you, Mark. And again, thanks to all the uh, media centers and access centers that, 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 uh, you know, that spread the word about the registry of deeds. Excellent. Well, thank you. And thank you at home for watching. Please continue to watch your local access station for more quality, locally produced programming.